Hey guys, uh, what's going on? Michael McCrudden. Before they're famous, by now you guys obviously already know that. Uh, I've been doing this show for, for almost five years now. Uh, I've also been going through a lot recently. Uh, I haven't uploaded in like four or five days and I got a lot of stuff to tell you guys. There's been a lot happening. Um, so this video is definitely gonna be something really, really different. So I don't do like a lot of vlogging or behind the scenes kind of stuff because we got a, you know, a strict deadline of daily videos. But I thought I would show you guys where I've been working since 2013. I came into this studio to film my very first like professional YouTube video. And it's been like quite, quite the journey. I didn't think YouTube was gonna be much. I didn't think, there certainly was no career there. Definitely not for me. I didn't think people were really gonna watch this stuff. And uh, we've come a really, a really long way. Uh, now this is a busy room if you look around. You got Liam there, you got Ron, he's on top 10. You got Charlotte from Inform Overload. You got Haley, she's the producer of all this. You got Landon, of course. So there's a lot happening in this room, so I'm gonna let them get to it. Uh, but I got a lot, a lot to tell you. So if you're like a newer viewer of my show or you haven't watched my Before They're Famous, my stories uh, from childhood, I was trying to get going in entertainment. The game changer for me was when I found performance in all through elementary school, high school, and into university, I took the stage for each and every school play there was. By the time I came here to this studio, it was 2013, I hadn't caught a break. I had like written and produced shows, I was an actor, I was a writer, I was a director, I was a Chippendale dancer one weekend. I did, I did everything I could. I like responded to a Craigslist ad and it was like, come host YouTube videos. And it wasn't a lot of money. Well, it was basically $20 a day. Uh, but I said, someone's gonna pay me? It's not like an audition. So I came here and then I started coming here once a week and then twice a week. And in like two years I was filming 10 to 15 videos a day. Uh, I still wasn't making a lot of money, but I found opportunity. From, from 2013 to now. So what's that, four years? It's been exhausting. I'll, I'll be real with you guys. It's been a lot of fun, there's been so many highs. But imagine keeping up a schedule, working 365 days a week with hundreds of thousands of people watching you and commenting and applauding your successes and tearing you apart at every chance they can. There's a good and bad to everything, I understand that. It's been a lot and I've been working on a really you know, tight structure. So the room we we do the editing and the writing in is different from where we do the shooting. I just showed you that. Every day, I run up these stairs at five o'clock because I have a two hour window to film whatever before they're famous, after they're famous, before they were gone, versus. Uh, but I'll run up these stairs. I've fallen up these stairs countless times. And sometimes I'm wearing like my cloud suit or my brick suit. There's been times I've worn wigs and dresses. And there's other businesses in this building. So they're all like, what is this lunatic doing? But it's been cool, right? I've also had like celebrities come by. Uh, we brought them into this space, brought them into our world, sat them down. I don't know. There's a lot of memories. A lot of memories. Now here we have Nikki Benz, who has a long-lasting career and is an award winner. I'm lucky enough to be sitting next to her. So for this video, I'm gonna get a little help from him. That's right. I'm joining McCruden for Before They Were Fake. At McMaster University for theater they and call film. call me that sometimes. Dude does not give up. It oh, was you are? Into McMaster. That's my nickname. Really? Side note. For what? Like masturbation? Oh my god. For my content, dude. So when I started doing Before They Were Famous, uh, it was pretty quick that I broke out on my own, but I didn't really have any money. Uh, and I had to like get someone to edit it because I had to write this every day. So people would come by, I would always tell them this is my office. Um, and for real, like to be real, it's not far off. I was just at a desk writing, stealing electricity to build this show. Uh, but then we did eventually get an office. I could afford some rent. Uh, this is the place I've spent the last three years with my team, Matt, Kevil, Alid. Um, and now it looks different because it's not my office anymore. This is uh, not my equipment. It didn't, we had it painted blue, like some of my biggest videos. Lil Xan, Takashi, Cardi B, the Rich Life series, all that was conceptualized in this room. Uh, Cash Me Outside went viral, we celebrated. You know, the people that I get excited to go to work with every day, are, they've all bonded and worked with me like 60 hours a week at least in this room. Um, not my room anymore, because uh, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm 
not going to be filming here anymore. I'm saying goodbye to a lot of people in this video. Let's go talk to Landon. Uh, Landon's the guy who gave me my big YouTube break and helped me for like ever. Even like last night, he was helping me. All right, I'm here with the guy I owe so much of my YouTube success to. This man introduced me to the world of YouTube. He put me on camera for the first video that got, I don't know, like 40,000 people watched my audition tape. Yeah, your audition tape, it was actually so good that we, it was uploaded. We're like, we need to make money off this. It was crazy. I think it was on the Seth MacFarlane, some boob Oscar. I didn't even know what we were talking about. Yeah. And I didn't understand like, we were working with so little, so like, I'm, like, just go on camera and talk about it. Yeah, you didn't even watch the Oscars. He's like, but I could still do it. I'm like, you could still do it. I, I didn't know him at the time, so I'm like, okay, this guy's weird. He's gonna go film this video. And it seemed like you watched the Oscars. <laughs> now, I, I didn't introduce Landon Dalit Singh, but I don't think he needs much of an introduction. This man has five YouTube shows. There's top, most amazing top 10. Top 10 Nerd, Life's Biggest Questions, Landon Productions, Inform Overload. The list goes on and on. You employ quite a few people. You're, uh, you're doing great things. But I was his actual first hire, and that was back in February of 2013. Now, uh, my life was in a way different place back then. I was like, I, you know, I was gonna be an actor, and I thought, or a writer, I produced television shows, and nothing clicked, and I was done. I was like looking for work in construction. I wanted out of the entertainment business, until I met you. What was your life back when we first met? It was weird. Um, well, I was established for like a year or two. But it was, when you joined, it, was, it wasn't anything yet. I was still, I was, I was working two other jobs. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't even full time. I was working those jobs to be able to pay you. But uh, it was, it was different. And I remember we still, we, we never made a lot of money. It was no. just the impressions. Like all of a sudden, like the Dr. Phil show called me and wanted me on their show. Uh, this is Michael right here. What is Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Hello. Okay. Well, I'm... Who are you to judge me? Can you tell me? Uh, Russell Brand would react to our videos. I got my money on the fact that Bruce Jenner is counting down the hours to Halloween so he can throw on a dress, carry around a purse, and not have so many people ask so many goddamn questions. Don't this seem like when you watch something like Blade Runner or some dystopian thing of like when you see a bit of telly in a film from the future, like everything's a bit, hello, we're evil now. <laughs> like, uh, this, you know, people on Twitter would, would have their things to say. So although YouTube wasn't paying a lot of money, we were like, there's opportunity, there's growth here. And after facing like so much naysayers and, and no opportunity, I was like, this is, this is, something big's happening here. Yeah. Uh, so the next, I gotta thank you because uh, Landon like pushed me out on my own, essentially. Uh, I started making Before They Were Famous in Mom's Basement. Uh, 2013, I made the Jim Carrey one. I didn't start taking it serious or like regularly upload until 2015. And you were like, bud, you got something here. Uh, what did you think? Because they were crap. They were like bad. Like I'm not the best editor. They were kind of crappy in the beginning. Felix recalled that that was. Mm. Felix recalled that this was the first time people. But he made these videos, and it's just your your editing skills. I would never have hired you as an editor. They were, just weren't good. And then um, I, I took notice of them. They were hitting. Some of them were hitting views. Yeah, Dan and, Bilzerian got like half a million. Yeah, and this guy's getting more views than we're getting. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. I don't know. It was it was weird that you were making videos, and then it just started growing. And. Uh, I'm like, this guy's gonna be bigger than we are. So I kind of pushed him to do his own thing. Can't control me. I'm, yeah. like, I'm like a bull. I, there's no there's no controlling me. So I had to break out on my own. I had to get my own thing going. And uh, if it wasn't for that push, because I was really, like, I'm like. You were stressed out. But because at the time you didn't know what it was still. No. And I back then, like YouTube now, it just sucks with money and stuff like that. But back then, YouTube paid a lot of money. Like it, it was, it was a decent income. You can, you can pay. Uh, but you, you didn't know what it was. I knew what it was, and I'm like, like you're gonna make so much more money if you just, if you just do this thing on your own. And I'm like, how the hell I can maybe do this once a week? How the hell am I gonna do this every day? Yeah. How am I gonna put my life and people I employ? based on the YouTube channel for security. Like it just seemed. And then it just, it clicked for you. And then you come back to me, you're like, I don't know, you were just, you were just different. Like you were just like a little bit less stressed and it, it just worked, it just worked out. But there was times where you're like, even, even though it worked out, you're like, 
is there a time I can come back if it like fails? Yeah. Because it is YouTube, right? And it's so new to you. You know, you make like a dollar, let's say, and then you make a hundred bucks, you get so yeah. excited. But I guess you were like, you were, uh, um, you knew that it could go down. So you're like, can, I can, I, can, I, can, I, can I come back? <laughs> yeah, no, it totally could have went either Dude, way. Dude, no, you don't need to come back. It's going to work out. So Landon was nice enough. Not only did he, you know, give me that final push, he also shared with me the, the space that I filmed these videos in till now. Uh, so his team would work like nine to five and then after me and my team would move in. But we've worked side by side, so I've seen the success of top 10 take off and, and, and Life's Biggest Questions and Nerd. And I owe, and like it's, there's been so much happened between us. Uh, and we were like the small guys in Toronto. Like we were not, we were like Well, we were going, else. we went to events to just meet the bigger YouTubers. Yeah. And they just wouldn't give us time of day. So, and then I was like, if I, if I push Mike and he becomes big, I can collab with him. So that was like, oh. I, Mike, become bigger. Like, let's do this. Wow. But um, he was kind of here before all of this kind of blew up, really. Because yeah. information overload was like, I don't know how many subscribers it was at. Uh, under 100,000? Under 100,000? I, I don't know. Yeah, I think we were getting to like quarter million when I was kind of quarter mil. pulling out, maybe more. So it's been a million. Yeah. It's much bigger now. More since that. Anyway, seen a lot of growth. For everything you've done for me, this is this is not enough. But I did obviously grab you a little gift. Ooh. Um, I'm sure we'll be enjoying this together at some point. The Tron, I like it. Thanks a lot, man. And then I got one more thing. Okay. This here <laughs> is uh, a little weird. I've actually been holding on to this. Is, is it underwear? He once got me Saks underwear for Christmas. It's. And I said, and I said, I don't like it. And he said, I'll, I'll take it back. <laughs> Dude, you're making money now. Let's go. <laughs> um. I got this a while ago, and then I just, we, went, you, we had your wedding. I was in his his bridal party, and I'm like, the dude's getting married. This is a stupid gift, but it's been sitting there, it? and I'm like, okay, so I wouldn't call us best friends, but I'd like to be breast friends. <laughs> <laughs> so this is. <laughs> it's so stupid. I have to I have to keep this. You keep one, and I keep one. So we're ever connected as breast friends. That's funny. Man. I'm gonna keep it on my desk. Um, You're a little more professional than me. You, yeah. You can put it in a drawer. Yeah. But for me, you know, like it. I love you. That's funny, man. You've done so much goodness for me. This is what this, I. I'm so glad I I pushed you out to make your show because look what I got. And hey, if you don't want it, I'll keep it and I'll wear it. <laughs> 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 So stupid, but I just thought, hey, we're best friends. We're best so friends. that's it. All right, give me a hug. Oh, that was the awkwardest hug. <laughs> All right, so there's so many people in this building that I've worked with for years. Liam Collins is uh, one of my favorites, the sweetest guy. Now he's the producer of a bunch of YouTube channels that you guys watch. We mentioned them in our interview with Landon. Um, you're, are you gonna miss me? I'm gonna be. Yeah, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I worked with this guy for like five years now or something. We did a lot of weird, crazy things together. Yeah. I would have to, so I get really hot and sweaty, so I would have to film with no pants on. I remember that. <laughs> so I would sit at a desk, but in underwear, and then at the end of the video, I would always like walk off, and one time my balls fell out. <laughs> I, I missed that. <laughs> but I, I yeah. caught everything else, but uh... Those, those are pretty, some interesting times back in the day on IO Trends and stuff. Yeah. He, he was on YouTube before I was, and uh, he, when I came on the show, I was like, oh, I, I saw like IO and stuff, and I was like, man, this guy's larger than life. And Oh my gosh. Yeah. And we were just getting started. Yeah. So it's been such a blast working with you, yeah. and uh, obviously things were, like I had my head down, growing the show, so I hope that with me not being here every day, we, we're better friends. And when you see me, we're, we're partying and, and celebrating all our success. Uh, okay, so with me I have two people that need little introduction. We have Rebecca Felgate and Danny Burke. You guys know them for Most Amazing Top 10. They're way more famous than I am. Um, you guys are a big part of this journey. Like, When did you guys start working here? I remember coming in for my audition and McCrud's here sitting on the sofa being like, Yo, you gotta hire that girl! Um, and he was a scary ass man, and he still is, but I love him. Yeah, I, I think I was in the team because I was like the head host, because I'd like been to auditions, right? Like, mm -hmm. That gave me so much leverage. But so, um, really, I have to thank you for my career. Oh, God, you guys are super talented. Like, right away, I was like, Oh, I'm out of a job, I better get my own 
show going. I remember Mike scared me a little bit when I first came here <laughs> because I was behind the camera filming people, so it was my job to film Mike a lot. I think it was like the third or fourth video I did and it was a really long video you did and I realised I hadn't hit record or something, or ah. or something like that. And you did your you did your best attempt at looking like you were fine, but like it was a good try, but you clearly weren't. And like I never ever did that again ever, just because I didn't want to like I don't know, let me one down. So uh, you came to Canada yeah. and you met the biggest moose of them all. The moose and I have on a, the loose. I have a sweat condition, so refilming things is not my forte. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's so obvious. Which take was which? Speaking yeah. of the uh, sweat condition, I remember you and I had to host IO the morning after the Christmas party, and I've never looked so horrifying in a photo in my life. <laughs> The best picture of you and me. It's the famous one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know that picture, yeah. <laughs> so it's been so, like, and like having like creatives and, and people that you guys care about this work as much as myself, finding you guys as, as co workers and friends has been mm -hmm. so uplifting. It's been so uh, cool. For life. It's been so cool for me seeing your journey over the past like three years learning YouTube. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like really like understanding it as you've, you, you're in a weird position of like, like growing on YouTube really fast, but also like learning what it is as you go kind of thing. Like not many people have that, you know? Big, that. I'm coming at it from television and from the older generation. So it's been a, re and I, I've had you to thank for a lot of, Mike, this ain't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's been going on for a decade and it'll go on for a couple more. Um, and uh, I've had these guys host a few before their famous videos. Um, maybe we should have them come over and, and do more of that. Some of the British videos, for sure. Mm -hmm. I'd love that, because British people, you know, they, they need a British host if they're very confused. People are like, this is authentic. <laughs> it's not some some guy who eats O'Henry's yeah. drives a Ford. They're like, <laughs> <Is that you? laughs> yeah, an old Canadian there talking about Zoella. <laughs> <laughs> this man was from Worcestershire. It's <laughs> 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 like, no. <laughs> exactly. So See you there then, hopefully. Yeah, can't wait. Uh, so obviously this place is like super near and dear to my heart. <laughs> I planned that. Um, it's this. It's not all bad news though. Um, I've been like gathering equipment and looking for a space to make my own and to move my team of people somewhere that I don't have to film. You know, at five o'clock I can film any day when any news breaks. I can actually have a bit of a life and not always be working. So uh, I got my own studio. It's huge. It's a huge investment. It's a huge deal for me. I I never thought this would happen. So let me show you guys the new place. We got to drive, you know, to downtown Toronto. We're kind of out in like, well, we're like 20 minutes out. So uh, I'm looking forward to showing you guys the new place. Guys, I don't want to tell you exactly where the location of my studio is. For one, I've actually had a stalker. He like followed me to the gym once. It was kind of weird. Number two, there's been like a lot of shootings in Toronto. It's not a huge concern, but I'm like 2%. I just don't want to go there. Um, also, it's a little small, but real estate in Toronto is at an all-time high. And obviously this show isn't made just by me. We have a whole team. You're going to meet everyone. All right. Is it bright enough? Uh, yeah, now it is. Ah! All right, so this is the space, and this place is gonna open up so many opportunities. All of a sudden, I can have people come by. I can film at any time I want. We've got um, all this equipment we've just put together. I got my boob on my desk, of course. That's uh, that's mandatory. So I want you to meet Matt. He's my producer. He's also the first guy. What was the first video you edited for me? <coughs> I think it was like. Might have been Miley Cyrus, or it was the next one after that one. Wow. 2015, there were like five minute videos, really short. Uh, well, they were, they were disastrous. The music was my choosing, and I was like, nope, the music's <laughs> working, let's keep that music. Ding, ding, ding. It was elevator music. Ding, ding. Oh! It was worse than elevator music. It was like, if you're playing a really bad video game, it's like the home screen on pause. Yeah. So me and Matt go back like years and years and years, went to college together, and then when uh -huh. I, what'd you think when I was like, I, 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 this YouTube might be something? Um, at first I, well, no, I knew it would. 
Yeah. yeah, I did. Um, like I always, like I was working in TV before that. I always wanted to get into YouTube because I, I knew that this was the future. Now it's the present. Um, yeah, and then like you know, I was working with uh, Landon over there too. Like actually, you hooked me up over there. Yeah, he was actually uh, I was working editing with them. But I stole you. This is a very talented man. We have done so much work together. Half the videos you watch, he's either been the writer or the editor, and uh, he just helps me out on the daily. Uh, yeah. Kevin, let's let's put Kevin on camera for a minute. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. Uh oh. Hi. <laughs> what do you do, Kevin? I'm the editor. And what was the first video you edited on this channel? Uh, I think it was Henry Cavill. Uh, I'm not sure. I remember my the first big video was Do Perfect, and that was when I first like got the got the whiff of the internet and what people will say, especially when you don't mean to make a, re a religious joke and everyone thinks it's a religious joke and you get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and what's been your like favorite project you've worked on here since? I have no idea. It's all of them are really fun. Like we just do stupid shit and it's fun because like, again, coming from TV, like everyone else, uh, you're like there's so many strict rules and, shit, and then here we just get to do whatever we want. Like I can say shit. Yeah, we censor that. You're gonna de censor that. You're gonna demonetize my, my goodbye video. That's some bad language, Kevin. Uh, we have Aylin here. Now, if you guys don't speak Spanish, you may not recognize her, but she does the Spanish version of Before They Are Famous. How many subscribers you got now? Uh, 700,000. She's gonna hit a million this year for sure. The girl is killing it. She's also way better to look at than me hosting the show. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what was the first video you did? Nicki Minaj, but it was a dub. She used to dub over Azzy as was our host, so we would have Azzy talking, but it didn't sync up, and it would be her voice. Después de que su carrera como actriz fallara, Nicki trabajó en un restaurante hasta que la corriera. Exactly. But you have TV, you work in television? Yeah, before, like for Mexican network in television. It was cool, but this is cooler. So this girl, not only does she write her own scripts, she edits these videos, she films herself, she does absolutely everything on her own. Uh, because the pesos, they don't, they're not, they're not as big as the, the, the US dollars, so she's a one woman team. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy what she does every day. Uh, she's so great. Hey, we have Alex. Alex is the newest addition to the team. <laughs> Copyright at work. Hi. <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> basically write the bios for the celebrities and just try to get everything right uh, so I don't get any hate mail myself yeah and yeah, uh, it's a heavy burden yeah, the yeah. whole world's watching well I've done I've done comedy and stuff I have a performance background and uh, you may be watching this wondering hey you know what that guy looks familiar and you know what Michael I actually do have two celebrity parents what? Yes, yes, I do. I am, in fact, the love child of Leonardo DiCaprio and Steve Buscemi. <laughs> and he's got... I wasn't prepared for any of that. Uh, he's also worked on Before They Are Fiction, and he's been doing a great job on that channel as well. So uh, hopefully, if we get that off the ground, I'll be putting more of that on his shoulders. Okay, and finally, we have Azur the intern. What's up? Now, Azur, what do you do here? Uh, I do a bit of everything. I mean, I do the uh, McCrud Entertainment channel, do the top fives on there. Um, I do the thumbnails for that channel, I do the thumbnails for Before Their Fiction, and I also write the scripts for uh, the McCrud Entertainment. So we got this kid working pretty hard, and it's a pretty cool story because Azur's not from Toronto, he's actually from Kansas. Uh, he slid into my DMs, and I was like, yo, pretty cool kid, he had some really good ideas. And I'm like, uh, what are you doing for the summer? And uh, all of a sudden he's here. And like every day we go for lunch and he's filming videos. It's uh, it's kind of what we're trying to do with uh, Hey Mom, I Made It. Uh, you know, big fans of the show are people that want to get out there and get into this line of work where we're trying to promote people. And it starts with Azar. So he's actually like going through my DMs, adding people to that website as well. If you haven't checked it out, you should definitely do that. So lots of big things are gonna happen in this space. We got to 2.5 million in someone else's room, borrowing someone else's equipment, working on their schedule. Now we have complete freedom. Uh, I've got some very talented people helping me out every day and we have some crazy stuff coming your way. Uh, I, I'm gonna save that for a future video. 
But I, the next video, there's gonna be a follow up to this. I'm gonna show you guys what goes into making a Before They're Famous video. Because like, who we pick, why we pick them, the amount of research we put into it, what it's like behind the scenes filming, me sweating. I have a towel person, their name is Azer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty crazy stuff, and we're so excited, and it's summer here in Toronto. Just lots of cool stuff lined up, so um, look forward to all that, guys. Thanks for checking out this video. See you guys in the next one.